Hi, you are watching Kolsky Drones and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at the Hubson 501 SS Pro. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we're going to have a look at the Hubson H501 SS Pro. So over the next few weeks I'm going to be doing reviews on some of the brushless GPS quads that you can get on the market that have been out a bit but that's still great value for money. So I've got the Hubson 501S, the Parrot Bebop 1, the Parrot Bebop 2, the ASM C G035 and the Bugs 2W. Not in any particular order and that's what we're going to look at because you can still buy some really nice quads out there on the market that are a really good price. So let's have a look at this one. So the difference between this and all the others I'm going to do is this one is 5.8 gigahertz. So in other words, it's not got, it's not doesn't need a phone, it doesn't use Wi-Fi, it uses 5.8 gigahertz, and it's picked up through the antenna on the top of the transmitter. This is the pro version, so you can get two versions. You can actually buy three. You can buy this standalone, or you can buy it with the older type controller, or you can buy it with a pro controller. I used to have the one that had the non-pro controller and sold it about a year ago because I didn't ever get on with the remote. This is a so much better remote. So let's have a look at the drone. So the drone, this is the drone. It's really nicely finished off. It's a very well made, hundreds of videos of this thing on YouTube. But this is the later version. So this one doesn't need the compass calibrating every time you fly. The older one did, uh, even the Pro did. This one, you can just calibrate the compass when you like. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So, the other difference between this and some of the others we're gonna be looking at is this one doesn't have a proprietary battery. This one's on a 2700 2S battery. You can buy these anywhere. There's loads of different ones. You don't have to buy the Hubsan one, even though the Hubsan one's good value. And it comes with an EC3 connector. So let's plug it in and show you what you get. So as you can see, it just plugs in the back like this. And just let it bind to the drone. So what it's doing when you first turn it on, it's going to do a gyro sensor, so it's going to level itself. So at this point you don't move the drone. So it's got that level. Now the beep you hear, and I'm sorry about that, the beep is because it's not got a GPS lock in here. The beep will stop when it gets a GPS lock. Now let's have a look at the controller. So this is your controller, you've got your typical, your typical controls, this is on mode 1, so I, I've changed this over, this comes mode 2 or mode 1, you can do it every one. You've got GPS button, so all the hub sounds are the same, the buttons are in the wrong way around in my opinion, so off is down, up is on. So GPS on is that one, and then you've got return to home. Return to home will only work when you have the GPS turned on, so that is your return to home, so flick it up it'll return to home. On this side you've got your um, headless mode so this one will put it into headless mode and this one here will put it into follow me mode these don't do anything on this particular quad the dummy switches they do actually work but there's nothing connected to them and then you've got press enter quick press starts recording so that starts your video recording and then quick press on that one is take a photo. So, as you can see, that's your screen. The massive advantage of a 5.8 is you get no latency. Or very little latency, whereas Wi-Fi you get a lot of latency. The other massive advantage is this, this is all you need to bring with you. You don't need to bother about bringing your phone out with you. You can just go ahead and fly. So, this thing flies really well. We're going to discuss that in part two. So in part two I'm going to tell you what it's like to fly, I'm going to show you some flight footage from the camera and some flight footage of it flying so you can see what it's like in the air. Um, and it's a 1080p camera, it's not adjustable, the camera's not adjustable, right? the reason it keeps beeping is because I'm putting my hand over the top and that's where your GPS signal is. So that's what it's doing, so if you want to put something on top of it, you want to put a different camera on or put a run cam on, do not put it on the top there. It needs to go either underneath or on that piece there because that will block your GPS. It runs on an SD card and that's your SD card slot there. Uh, I've tried up to 64 gig and it's absolutely fine. It still needs a quite fast card, I've got a U1 in here and it's absolutely fine with that. You can pick them up cheap enough these days. So that's the drone. So the drone 
works on GPS and the follow me work mode works on GPS from this so you can see I'm getting GPS in here so I've got five GPS satellites on the drone but I am indoors and I've got three and then three are showing in yellow or being this because this is what it uses for follow me mode so the follow me mode is picked up by this by the controller itself because there's no phone so as you can see so sticks uh, down and in to start off set it off and then up you go in the air and as I say, you can have altitude hold, just like with altitude hold, or you can fly it with altitude hold off and GPS lock on. And then of course, you've got your home mode here. Must reiterate, to, have the, to make your home mode work properly, you must have the GPS turned on. This is your antenna for your 5.8 gig, and this is your 2.4. Let me just turn it off again. Let me just show you the controller. So if I turn the controller off, uh, if I turn the controller on with, and I hold the stick down and press enter I can then enter the secret menu if you like and this is where I can set reverse, set sensitivity of sticks uh, but it's got a thing called manual mode on here. If you turn manual mode off on it will turn off altitude hold so you can fly it much more like a uh, sports quad. I must warn you you've got uh, you've still got centering joysticks so it isn't the easiest thing in the world to fly with center in joysticks. This way, you get stick mode in here, 5.8 gigahertz frequency. If you click on that, it will tell you what your frequency is. And there you can see it's flashing up a frequency there. Now the reason it does that is because you can connect this up to a pair of goggles. So you can have this screen and you can use goggles. So I fly this with um, some Amways and get really decent range. You get much better range on the goggles than you do on this. So I'll tell you that much for now. This is not the best. I normally, I've only showed you this on here because this is a stock setup and what you'd buy. I do not fly with this. I have a different antenna on here. I fly with an Amway polarized antenna. Much better, rece much better reception. If you come out of there and go back in there. So if you want to calibrate the compass, it's a simple matter of holding that stick to the left and wiggling this one left and right until it comes up compass calibration on the screen. Let's see if I can make it do it. So again it's checking the gyro sense. It won't do anything until that's complete and then it'll give you this. It's going to check this and then that'll go off. <coughs> Excuse me. So to calibrate your compass stick over there and it should there you go. Calibrate compass one. So to calibrate compass one, it's simply a matter of turning this clockwise, not anti-clockwise. Obviously don't do this indoors and I will do this again when I go outdoors and fly this again. And now it's saying calibrate compass two on the screen, so if you can see that. That's drawn down and this way around and clockwise again. And there you go. Compass is calibrated. It's telling me it's got no GPS signal because I've calibrated the compass. So it did have a GPS, but now since I've calibrated the compass, it's lost it again. And there you go, it's come back. Now, if you can see, I only had five, now I've got seven. Although you don't need to calibrate the compass anymore, I strongly recommend doing it because I have found there's a little bit of drift if you don't calibrate the compass. So I still calibrate the compass most like. So that's a quick overview of the drone. As you can see, it's really nicely finished off. You can pick these up new for around £205, or if you want to buy it from Banggood, £170, £180. But you can get them cheaper if you want to buy one second-hand off eBay. I strongly recommend going with this transmitter and not the other one that comes with it, which is much cheaper. But it's a great drone. In part two, which will be coming up later in the week, we'll discuss the flight characteristics, the battery time, the range... And I'll show you the flight footage. So, thanks very much for watching. Have a fantastic day and keep flying. Press start. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please hit the like button. And please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.